Hey, hi everyone. Today I've got a good question for you to practice constructing the joint and marginal probability mass functions and computing the covariance of a, a pair of random variables. Also conceptually, it's a good question because of the following. We know if we have two random variables and they're correlated, that means they are dependent. But the following is not true. If two variables are dependent, it doesn't follow, although it could be true, but it doesn't have to follow that they must be correlated. And that's what this question is. So it gives us two random variables x and y, they're both Bernoulli and independent. And then we construct two variables, sum of the two random variables, and this absolute of the difference. And they show, we have to show that they are dependent, these two new random variables are dependent, but uncorrelated. To set out this question first, let's just set the notation. So let the new random variable x plus y, let's call that s, and the absolute difference of x and y, let's call that t. So we have to show that s and t are independent, but the correlation between s and t isn't zero. We need conditions to check each of these things. So first, independence, s independent of t, using this symbol means independence. So if they're independent, that means, guys, you know this result, the probability of s intersection t is equal to the probability of s times probability of the outcome t. Now some jargon here coming up. We need to calculate two types of probability then, probability of s and t, and each of these individual probabilities. So this thing, okay, yeah. Before I move on, I have to. We have to understand. Can you see that s and t they are discrete random variables because y and x are Bernoulli. So we're dealing with discrete random variables. Okay. Now coming back to here, we're dealing with two types of probabilities. Then s intersection t and the probability of the probability of the um, outcomes. Uh, of the S and T. So this thing here is what we call a joint probability mass function. We're going to need to calculate it from the pro joint probability mass function because it is a joint probability. This is going to be obtained from the marginal probability mass function for S and this will be the probability obtained from the probability from the marginal probability mass function for t. All right. So there are two types of probability mass functions here. This and for each of the individual ones, hence we use the word joint and marginal. So I'm going to have to construct that. So that's going to be like one part of the exercise. Then the next part of the exercise is to show that correlation between s and t is zero. This is true if and only if the covariance of s and t is zero. So I'm going to have to show that as well. Right. So first let's construct the marginal and joint probability mass functions for s and t. I'm going to just do for one and I'm going to leave you guys to practice for the other because just watching me you're not going to learn too much. So I think you want me to deal with this because the absolute sign that might throw some of you. First of all I want to know what the outcomes of t. What values can it take? Well x can take one or zero, y can take one of zero. So I'm just constructing this table. So when x is one and y is one, t is going to be one minus one is zero. When x is 0, y is 1, then uh, t is going to be 1. So x minus y will be minus 1, but you'd want the absolute value, so it's plus 1. Okay, and just do for the other two. And this is what I mean by discrete, because now you can see that t can only take the value 0 and 1. Okay, now we want to calculate the probability of observing t is 0 or 1. So I'm going to, this is going, this is my marginal probability mass function. So the outcomes are 0 and 1, and I want to calculate the probabilities. So let's just do this one. Note the outcomes here are pairs. Uh, t depends on x and y, so eventually we have to, and we know about x and y, that they're, how they're distributed, so the information ultimately goes back to x and y. So our outcomes for t actually in the end of the day depends on the outcomes x y so it's a pair of a pair consists 
uh, make up the outcome. When is t zero? We can see here is zero if x is zero, y is zero. Just using this notation, first number is going to be x, second number is y. Or it could be that x is one and y is one. These are the two outcomes, and they belong in the set for that t zero. That's why I put this curly bracket here. Right, how to calculate that t is zero? I want to calculate the probability of observing the outcomes, this or this, the two outcomes. Well, first of all, these two, they are mutually exclusive, so the probability of this union this outcome is just going to be the sum of the probabilities. So this first line is by mutual exclusivity of the two outcomes. Now let's work out each of these. This comma is just like intersection. Just another notation make it more compact, less, more simple to look at. So we're told in the question x and y are independent Bernoulli's but the word keyword here is independent. So independence means that this is a you can see this is a joint probability because it's x equals something and y is equal to something. By independence that breaks down into the marginal ones so that is that, so likewise this is this. You're told that x is Bernoulli with probability with a parameter half, same with y. So probability of half like of success, so it's half of failure. So it's um, since it's only two, yeah, so it's Bernoulli. So that's half. That's a half. Likewise, that's going to be a half times a half, so it's a quarter. So this whole thing comes out to be a half. So we can go over here now and write a half. And you guys leave it to you to do the same thing for that t is one. But I can already write out the answer, supposing I've got this right, it must be a half. Why? Because the probabilities of the outcomes, these must sum to one, right? So that's done. So then this is the marginal probability mass function for the random variable t. Now I want you guys to do it the same thing but for s, and then once you've done that, that means we can get these two probabilities, and all that remains then is to come up with the joint probability mass function table. Okay guys, and first I'll create a table for the possible outcomes of S. You'll find it 0, 1 or 2. And then just as I did before for T, do calculate the probabilities. And here you are and the answers they add up to 1, so that looks fine. Uh, so this is the marginal probability mass function for S. Okay, now I'm going to construct the table of the joint probability mass function for S and T. So I'm going to write down the outcomes possible for S and for T. And so we have six cells. Uh, so the joint probability mass function gives us the probability of observing the um, outcomes as, as in pairs of S and T. So, tell, so that, that way we can see like you know the relationship between S and T. First let's just do S is 0 and T is 0. Notice I use the intersection or you can use a comma. So all these are because all these are joint probabilities. Okay. When is S0 in terms of X and Y, which we know about? Well, S is 0 when the outcome, X and Y, belongs to the set, and then you can look back at the top, it's X is 0 and Y is 0 is the only case, okay? S is 0. S is 0. Uh, oh, I did it for T. Okay. S is 0 only when X is 0 and Y is 0. T is zero when is is when x and y are both zero or x and y are both one. Right, this is what I meant. Go back up to the table here when I constructed it. So T is zero when x and y are one or when x and y are both zero. Okay. Uh, I've written up in full, you don't actually have to kind of I'm doing everything full so you can see exactly what's happening so it belongs this outcome belongs to the set okay there's only one member in that set T has got two members in that set that is one member that is another member each member in this case remember made up by the couple S uh, X and Y we want the probability of eh, S is 0 and Y T is 0 so the intersection means probability that outcomes belong to both the set S and T well, what belongs to both sets S and T? Look here, you've got two members here, one member here. 
you've only got that there so what does zero zero appear in here yes appears there so you've got one member so probability of s is, 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 and t above zero is equal to probability of observing at x is zero and y is zero next line is by independence which we already used and this one next line by um, using the fact that we told that x and y are both the new leaf parameter half which we'll be used as well so that's a quarter half times a half is a quarter so quarter at this stage I'm wondering whether I should do another one but I did that one pretty slowly so I um, I think I'm just going to write down the other values in the table and again you guys for practice discuss and if you've got problem just kind of um, make a comment in the YouTube disc YouTube comment and uh, I'm sure somebody will help out okay so this is the constructed table probably up to half you can see that I've got three values of zero three non zero uh, I mean at value up to one yeah probably add up to one and so that's the joint probability mass function now guys we can check the condition of independence so if s and t are independent which we know they're not because the question says uh, so that this holds for all outcomes that means across for each of these six cells that condition must hold so let's just so let's just check let's say the first cell s is 0 and t is 0 let's take an s is 0 and t is 0 so we come we get this from the joint property mass function table there that's a quarter and probability of s equal to 0 times probability of t is 0 we get those from the corresponding marginal probability mass function table that's a quarter times a half is an 8 so clearly look that is not equal to that so therefore we've just shown that this doesn't hold hence s and t are not independent you can say then they are dependent remember this condition must hold for all cells if they're independent the condition that condition of independence must hold for all cells so just if you found that one doesn't hold for one cell that's enough right and we've already just found one that doesn't hold so that's enough so now we're on to checking next part checking the condition of uh, no cor of uh, no or correlation okay guys so the covariance so we want to see is the correlation zero remember that is zero if and on if the covariance is zero so let's look at the covariance the covariance is given for the random variable s and t is given by this the expected value of the product of the random variables minus the mean of s times the mean of y the expected value of s and t is given by this expression because s and t are discrete so this just says multiply each pair of outcomes along with their associated probability of observing those outcomes and add them up across all outcomes so let's show you how I do that maybe we'll do it right by here so you can see this literally says take each pair of outcomes so the six pairs of outcomes and multiply the associated probability so first will be zero times zero times associated probability is a quarter plus next one let's go down here s is zero times one times zero and do that for the remaining four cells and you can see that anything involving zeros uh, just gonna be zeros multiplying by zero so just look for stuff which doesn't involve zeros you can only see there's one thing s is one and t is one one times one times a half is a half so you can write down here immediately a half off you want to show working just just do what I did you know you can have uh, five cells which are zeros okay hopefully calculating the expected value of each of s and t is something that you recall but if you don't let's just write this down so the expected value of s and that's just the sum because s is discrete of the outcomes of across all s times the probability of observing that outcome so here it's going to be 0 times a half quarter plus 1 times a half plus 2 times a quarter so that's 1 half plus half is a 1 and can you do the same for t I'm going to say just check my answer though the expected value for t is a half okay so substituting the numbers into this we get 0 in other words, then correlation between S and T 
is zero. S and T are uncorrelated. And so what we have shown is that going back to here, because we might have lost the thread because it's so long, S and T they are dependent, but they are not correlated. Okay, guys, uh, you can fill in the gaps and where I did the working. And so um, hope that was helpful. Comment, share, like. See you later.